Is it time to reimagine your future? The right business skills may make a difference in your career. At Capella University, we offer a relevant education that's designed to focus on what you need to know in the business world. We'll teach professional skills to help you pursue your goals, like business management, strategic planning, and effective communication. And you can apply these skills right away. A different future is closer than you think with Capella University. Learn more at capella.edu. Welcome to the CJ Money Way Show podcast. The podcast show where we unlock potential one dream at a time. Today, we have another guest whose journey is truly worth hearing. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the Money Way experience. Hey, what's up, my good people? Welcome to the CJ Money Way Show, the podcast that brings you stories behind its success. Today, we have on the show B2B sales professional, a.k.a. the Million Dollar Man, Josh Flowers. How you doing today, Josh? I'm great, CJ. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, man. Thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, Josh, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man, and about your background. Yeah, you bet. So, I used to be a guy that worked in a cubicle at a random large company, and one day, I read a newspaper ad, CJ. Maybe you can relate. I think maybe we're around the same age. So I read a newspaper ad for a sales job, and I thought, this sounds interesting to me. And that was about 25 years ago. And so I embarked on a sales career, which I'm still in to this day. And along the way, I've dealt with some hardships, man. I had um, a back injury. I herniated a couple of discs, and that took me decades to heal from. And I got into all the naughty things like alcohol, drugs, marijuana, that sort of thing. But mine is a story of overcoming that stuff. So I'm excited to share it with your audience today. Yeah, man. Yeah, I do know about, you know, what you what you brought up in the beginning. And I know also about the uh, you know, going into certain 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 habits, you know what I'm saying? Like I yes, did man. all those things too, marijuana, drinking, uh gambling. I, I had a lot of bad habits, all mixed up in one at all at the same time, you know, but <laughs> Like you say, man, it's all about, you know, uh, overcoming them, knowing, taking accountability for for your actions and and moving on in life. You know, some people try to keep you down where you at, but he say not so. So, um, yes, sir. So, Josh, you said that you learn sales the hard way. So what is it like uh, doing cold sales, man? Yeah, it is the hard way, CJ, because. So again, I want to frame for your audience, right? I was working in a cubicle. It wasn't a great job, but it was a safe job, right? Mm -hmm. And all my colleagues, we had safe jobs, but I felt like I was dying inside. So when I saw this newspaper ad that said, you know, unlimited income potential, I thought, wow, that sounds really interesting. So I signed up straight away. And I remember my very first day on the job, it was like, here's a list of 30 people. Here's the script, start making phone calls. And I worked in a what's known as a bullpen environment with about 12 other people. And Mm. that's all we were doing was just hammering out phone calls, reading the script and then improving on the fly. So I consider that to be the hard, you know, hard (laughs) selling because it's like you got no experience and then you're just thrown into this. And it didn't take long for me to sort of get my feet under me. But uh, I remember those first two weeks, CJ, was not. Yeah, I was sort of questioning my decision. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because <laughs> I, I say that I, I know what you mean. That's why I asked about the 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 cold calls because when people call you, a lot of times I don't want to hear what you got to say. No. You know, like you take the call and then you start talking, and sometimes you can be talking and people will hang up on you in the middle of the conversation. Like, yeah, you'd be like, okay, and hey, this is such and such for this and this and that. You'd be like, yeah, okay, no. Or they ask you, is this Corwin Johnson? Be like, yeah. And then you go into your sales pitch. But I really don't want to hear what you got to say. So I will hang up on you in the middle of the conversation. I'm like, I don't want to hear that. So tell yes. me, man, just, just real quick. When you got that first call, when you did that first call, and somebody hung up on you, man, what's that feeling like? Oh, you're you're questioning your existence, CJ. You're like, <laughs> you know what it is? It's really hard to not take it personally, right? Yeah. And so that's one of the things as a salesperson you have to learn is that it's a numbers game. Yes, you're interacting with people, but ultimately, you know, you're trying to help people, 
You know, if you're really coming from the right place, you're trying to help people. So, you know, when they hang up on you or whatever, it's just, that's not the right person for you. Yeah. Right. So you got to keep going. And I'll tell you something else. I have a soft spot in my heart for those people. Now, whenever I get a cold call or someone rings yeah. on my doorbell, I always give them a minute, you know, okay. and then okay. respectfully, I'll tell them like, look, I'm not interested. Like, You got to <laughs> okay. get going, but I won't hang up on them. Cause I learned, man, I learned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. The take it from you. I, I quit hanging up. Now I just don't ask the phone. That's what I do. You know, yeah, like you <laughs> or just tell them, look, I'm not interested. All right. Hey, Thanks hey. for the call. Go call somebody else. You know, hey, I just say that. Honestly, you know, like when people come up to your door, like they might be trying to sell a vacuum cleaner or a shampoo, or, you know, for your house and this and that. And so now I just tell her, I'm like, look, man, you gotta wait for my wife to uh to come. She handles all that because <laughs> I really ain't got time to be talking about. It. Because say yeah. if I do get a a vacuum cleaner or a, a shampoo, and then she come home and be like, why did you get that? That's just a waste of money, you know. So exactly, you're getting in trouble now, you know. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> I let her handle all the little house duties and things of that nature, man. So, I love it. so Josh, man, Tim, what are the most important sales skills and techniques somebody can have? Yeah, thanks for asking that question. And, you know, I'm going to say that these are things I learned in my sales career, yes. But I want everyone that's listening to know that this is not just for sales, right? This, this is for life. So the two most important things that I learned, number one, is you have to persevere and you have to keep going. Mm -hmm. So even in those first two weeks when I was getting hung up on a lot, I'll tell you another funny story about those first two weeks, okay? When I was about 10 days in, um, one day, one of my colleagues finally told me that I was reading the script incorrectly mm -hmm. and I was pronouncing a word, you know, in the wrong way, but they mm -hmm. let me do it for 10 days before they corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll tell you, I felt like an idiot, but... You know, you just keep going one foot in front of the other. So whatever you're doing, however hard it is, you know, tip number one is you got to persevere and you got to keep going and just trust you're going to get better. You know, it's going to things are going to improve if you keep going. So that's number one. Number two is you have to learn from failure because in sales, there's a lot of failure. Even someone at my level, um, I am still failing a lot more than I'm winning. Right. Because it's just the nature of the game far, you know, far less people want to buy my product than want to go for it. And so you've got to get comfortable with failure, but you've got to take the time to reflect when you fail mm -hmm. and take the lessons. Right. Because, you know, I, you've had good things happen in your life. I certainly have. There's not a lot to learn when that happens. You think to yourself, mm -hmm. yeah, of course. I mean, I crushed it. That's what happens. Right. It's mm -hmm. those painful moments where, you know, you came up short that you can really look at yourself if you'll be honest and not try and hide from it, you know? So that's what I'd, I'd give that tip to everyone is hang out in your failure a little bit and see if there's some lessons there you can, you can take. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree with you, man. Even in, you know, in this podcasting and things of that nature, you oh, gonna yeah. fail a whole lot of times and you, you know, a lot of things you learn from them, you know, and then even with the, uh, what they call the collective criticism, you gotta be able to, to man up and take that. It's cause sometimes it, it actually helps you, you know, to better, you know, do whatever you have to do when you take criticism. You're like, okay, I wasn't doing that. Or like you say yes. with the uh, sales pitch or, okay, I was mispronouncing this word, but maybe I, you got it right. It's like, okay, now things start clicking a little more, you know, like, ooh, if I would have known this from the beginning, then maybe I wouldn't have got all them. <laughs> well, <laughs> angles. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You said it like you just have to be open to it and you'll feel it right when someone's criticizing you or, you know, you've done something wrong. You're going to want to fight back or you're going to want to resist it or make excuses. But it's so healthy to just go, no, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. Right. And for you, I, I completely empathize with you because you're doing something that's really scary for a lot of people. Right. You're meeting new people. You're bringing them online. You're communicating with your audience. A lot can go wrong. Um, but you got the guts to keep doing it. And I know you're failing forward just like me, right? So I embarked on a sales career, which I'm still in to this day. And along the way, I've dealt with some hardship, man. I had um, a back injury. I herniated a couple of discs and that mm. took me decades to heal from. And I got into all the naughty things like alcohol, drug, marijuana, that sort of thing. But mine is a story of overcoming that stuff. So I'm excited to share it with your audience today. Well, it's just one of those things that I've really learned in my career and in life, right, CJ, that when we fail, that 
there's something about that, right? It just hits us so hard that I think for a lot of people, that's when they tr- they reach for that bottle, right? Or they w- reach for that smoke, mm-hmm. or they reach for that distraction so they don't have to feel the pain. But really what you want to do is be in the moment and feel the pain. Acknowledge your role in the process so that you can grow. You know, and I'll tell you, I just had this experience yesterday. I lost a deal that I thought that we were going to win, mm-hmm. you know? And I had to reflect on the feedback that I received about our proposal. It wasn't quite right. We didn't, you know, it was a little bit too complicated. And so I spent time thinking about that and thinking, how can I make this more simple the next time around, right? But the old Josh would have reached for the bottle or would have reached for the weed, you know? That's what I would have done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I I get it, man. You know, that, like you say, a lot of times that's life. And, you know, that becomes our crutch and our go-to. And instead of handling the problem head on, as it seemed like you did, we, you know, we want to deflect it to something else that, you know, that we desire and relaxes us at that moment. But at the end of the day, we still got to face whatever we just went through. Yeah, and if we don't, then it's just going to happen again, yeah. right? Like our role in this life is to grow, right? Is to have our experiences and then to grow and hopefully avoid needing to repeat the same lesson over and over again. So the more you can take those lessons, you know, don't run from them, the the faster you're going to level up. Exactly, exactly. And on that note, Josh, as you say, you know, you just went through, you know, something yesterday. So... What is it about closing deals from your perspective? Yeah. Oh, I love this one, CJ. Um, so, of course, when I was a younger sales professional, it was the excitement of chasing down deals. It was the excitement of competing with my friends and my colleagues and being successful. And, of course, the money that you make, you know, in sales, if you're good at it, is really nice. But as I've matured in my life, I've realized that the real reward is the fact that you're earning someone's trust Mm -hmm. and you get the opportunity either yourself or your organization to help them in solving a problem. Right. And that's really what business is, right? That's what sales is, is we all have problems. Organizations have problems and they need solutions Mm -hmm. and, but they need to trust you before they're going to ask you to help them with, you know, with solving that problem. And so that's the real reward for me is if I do a good job of building trust with someone and convincing them that, hey, we're the right organization to help you solve this problem. That is so rewarding, you know, when they say, yeah, we want to work with you. uh, That's the best feeling in the world, CJ. Mm. Yeah, so uh, like you say, trust. Trust is important in in anything, in a relationship, because that's that's what that intimate, you know, thing is. And I'm pretty sure as in sales and when you're dealing with people's money that like you say, they want to have that trust. Like I can trust you with what I'm giving you. And that if you're telling me that Josh, if you're telling me that I'm going to get this return with what I'm doing, then that's what I'm, you know, expecting you. And that's what I'm trusting you to do and to be a man of your word. Correct. And, and you know, like almost anybody that's been in sales has, at some point had to sell a product that they didn't believe in. Mm. And I'll tell you, that is the worst experience in the world when you're not sure that your product can deliver the value. And I would advise anyone, if you're in a situation like that, get out of there, Mm. go find a product or a service you can believe in. And so for me, I've I've sold products and services. Right now I sell software and services. Um, But then on the personal side, I'm I'm a coach, right? And Mm -hmm. so I sell my coaching services to help people level up their lives. And, you know, the only way I can do that effectively is if I believe in my own message. Yeah. So I got to live it. You know, I got to live it and I got to believe it and I got to have results so that I can go to someone and say, hey, look, I got this result in my own life. I'm getting it for my clients and I can get it for you as well. You know, trust me. Mm. So speaking about your coaching program, uh, Josh, tell us a little bit about it. Oh, thank you. Yes. Well, it's one of the things I'm most proud about, CJ, because let me paint a bit of a picture for you. So I've been in sales for about 23 years, Mm -hmm. very successful, you know, and I could just keep going with it, 
right? I'm a professional now. I've worked from home for 20 years. Um, you know, I made plenty of money in my job. But I just got to the point last year, or about a year and a half ago, where I thought, is this it? You know, am I just going to be really good at this job? Or is there going to be more to my career, you know, before I'm getting to that point where I want to retire? And I just couldn't get away from this idea that I need to start sharing with others everything that I've learned. You know, and as I mentioned, I've overcome a really bad back injury. I've eliminated the negative vices from my life. So I'm 100% sober. I don't watch porn. I don't do any of those things. I've been married for 25 years. I've got two beautiful kids. So I've learned a lot of lessons. And I just thought, you know, and I got in great shape too, CJ. So mm-hmm. I'm really, you know, lean. I got ripped. And I just <laughs> thought, I got to... I got to teach people this stuff, you know, because it's working for me. Yeah. And um, so that's what I did. I started in January, and so I'm still selling, but I'm also coaching, and I've got clients that I'm serving, and I, I post a lot of content on Instagram so people can see how I'm living, my program, what it's all about, and see if they vibe with it. You know? so mm-hmm. In a nutshell, I can help people get more discipline in their lives, get their bodies into shape, get their minds into shape, improve the quality of their relationship. And if you want more success, you know, if you want to earn more money, I can help you with that as well. So that's what it's all about. Okay, Josh. So what's the name of the program again so we can find you on Instagram and these other uh, social media channels? Yeah, so I want people, if they're interested, to go find me on Instagram. And it's just Instagram.com forward slash Josh Flower number and then the number one. So just my name, Josh Flower one. And that's where they can... Um, follow me and see, you know, you'll see I post every single day, my wake up time, my morning routine, my workout, the foods that I'm eating. And I share little nuggets of, you know, wisdom that I, that I've accumulated in my life and career on the platform as well. And the idea, you know, CJ is, I don't know if my program is going to be right for someone. Mm -hmm. So I want them to check it out and see if they like me, see if they vibe with me. Right. And if so, ask me a question, interact with me, and then we can maybe figure out if I can help you. Oh, yeah. I'm telling the audience right now, we did have an interview, uh, a camera light. Hey, my man Josh, like he say, ripped. He is ripped. Man is in shape, so you might want to check him out. But uh, Josh, man, <laughs> I, I, I was listening to you, man, and uh, one thing that I, that I took from what you were saying was is that a lot of people that I've, you know, had on the show, man, and one thing that I admire about, you know, you all is that your service for people. And how, you know, you want to see yes, people, sir. the transformation for others in their lives, you know, not only for yourself, but to see others succeed, man. And, you know, I, I'm just proud of you guys for having that type of mindset because everyone don't have that mindset to want to see others prosper. And so this wasn't the question that I had, but just to ask, like, what is the inspiration behind what you do? to want to see others succeed in life? Love that question. And I, I, by the way, just a comment, I'd say it's the same for you, CJ, because you've created a platform where you're helping people like me get our message out to the people in your audience that trust you, that care about you. So you're, you're doing the same thing, you know, and I'm, I'm proud of you too. I appreciate um, it, man. Yeah, 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 I do too. So, you know, the thing that, I, I guess I realized is just that if we want a better world, we need better people, mm-hmm. right? And here's the thing. All of us were gifted this life that we have, right? We, and it's really the only thing that we can control. Like the only thing I can control are my thoughts, and my actions, right? I can't control you and I can't control even my own family. Yeah. I can only control myself. So my belief is that people need to take ownership and control of their lives. That's the first step. And that means getting your mind right, getting your body right, getting your habits right, you know, introducing the habits that build you, removing the habits that hurt you, even if they may be a little bit pleasurable. Mm -hmm. And so that's my, what I believe. And so I, I really try and teach people that step one, you know, is to get your life in order. And then once you do that, you know, Step two will be revealed to you. That's just what I believe in my heart, TJ, you know? So that's, that's, that's why I do it. That's why I coach. At Capella University, learning the right skills could make a difference. 
That's why our business programs teach you relevant skills you can take from the course room to the workplace. A different future is closer than you think with Capella University. Learn more at capella.edu. Yeah, I, you know, um, it's funny. I was just earlier today because I'm working on a second podcast that's going to be coming out next year. And, and it's, actually, it's called Thoughtful Dialogue with CJ. And I'm really... This one, I'm, my niche is uh, spiritual and personal development. And I really want to talk to men, uh, especially not excluding women. I don't ever want to exclude women for anything because they're mostly your fan base, anyway, <laughs> whatever yeah. you do. But uh, I'm listening to you, man. And I really would like for you to join me on that show, man, because it's, it's very positive. And, and some of the things you just said just now, I, I, I heard myself saying that earlier today. It's about first working on yourself. And because I was doing a, a subject called when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I reasoned as a child. But when I became grown, I put childish things away. And, you know, and that's that's just part of the, the equation, Josh. Like sometimes we just don't want to put some things away that we need to put away. <laughs> <laughs> That lands for me, man. That's me. I, I wasn't ready to let him go, you know? Yeah, you know, and, and, and so we operate like that and we move like that. And so then we take it into our adulthood and then we, you know, we figure because we've grown in age, but we still have this childish mentality that we, you know what I'm saying? Although I'm 30 or 40 or, you know, I'm 50 and I still have this childish mentality. And until I get rid of this childish mentality, I can't move on, like you said, with the door too. That's the se- that's the second step. Once I get rid of the first step and, and take accountability for my life, like you said, I can't take accountability for my children's life, my wife's life. They they their own person. But once I take accountability for myself and then I move on, now the door can open for me to see other things. And that's what I was taking from what you said, man. I ain't mean to get off the off the subject, but oh, yeah. <laughs> You nailed it. You nailed it. That's really what it is, you know, is, is start there, you know, and I, I know we're going to talk about some tips for the, um, for the audience as well, but uh, that's a little preview that it, it, it's starting with showing yourself love and respect and building trust. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to tap you on that. I got your phone number now. I'm going to tap you on for Please one do. of them episodes, man. I like what you say. I'd love to come on. Yeah. I'd love to come on, CJ. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. Don't miss out on CJ Moneyway's book, Both Eyes Open and Both Eyes Shut. And get ready to pre order his upcoming release, The Issues of Life, coming soon. Moneyway, aiming to inspire. So, Josh, so what are the two most important areas people should work on for success? Yeah, I love this. Okay, so. Now, I'm going to share something here, and I know people are maybe going to roll their eyes a little bit, but I'm going to say it anyway, okay? (laughs) Go ahead. So, the the, the first thing is we need to introduce the habits that are going to give you energy. And the habits that are going to give you energy are the healthy habits. So, that means we've got to start exercising regularly. Mm. We've got to get our diet tidied up. And we've got to make sure that we're getting enough rest. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, one thing. We've got to introduce the healthy habits that are going to add to your energy. Because guess what, folks? If you want to make a difference in this world, you need to be 100%. You know, you need to do everything in your power to bring the best you into this world. And so that means, number one, promote your energy. The second thing that people need to do is they need to get rid of the habits that take away your energy. So I'm talking about the drinking, I'm talking about the smoking, I'm talking about the pornography, I'm talking about the gambling, the distraction, you know, going on your phone until midnight. All that stuff has to go, and I, I, I know it's hard. These mm-hmm. are pleasurable things. And for a lot of people, this is how they interact with their friends, yeah. right? Yeah. So I understand that it's a hard thing, but trust me, if you can cut out these things that take your energy away, you are not even going to believe the kind of person that you can be. The, the amount of energy you will have to chase down your dreams. Mm. Even if you're a busy person, you know, I, I'm sure we got a lot of folks in your audience that have kids and they've got two jobs and they've got responsibility. 
but we need you, you to have maximum energy so you can do that stuff plus everything else that you need to do to become the person you were born to be. Exactly. I, and, and I totally agree with you, man. And, and, you know, listening to you and I get a lot of fitness people, you know, that come on and talk about how important uh, your health is and your physical health. But like you say, I, I, you was talking to me right there. I hear it all the time. And my wife just said something <laughs> to me. She did. She just told me the other day. She said, uh, I'm going to get you a membership for one of the gyms around here, uh, Planet, uh, Planet Fitness. <laughs> Because that is something that I need to do. I need to exercise more uh, with some of the health issues that I've uh, occurred. You know, I need my diet needs to be to be better. And so I'm listening to you because what you're saying is, is reigning true, not only for those in the audience, but I, I'm a fan right now myself, man, because when I have people on, you just don't have them on for other people to listen to. Sometimes it's for you, you know, just like when you're talking. And you think that you're talking to someone else. And a lot of times you're really talking to yourself. <laughs> like, that message was for me. <laughs> that, that is so true. You know what they say is the best way to learn is to become a teacher, right? Because then you really have to think these things through and go, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. Why am I not following that? It's like, like, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, you and I are both 50. So I turned 51 in two weeks. And I'm here to tell you, man, like I had a terrible injury. I had all the vices. And at 49, like if you go on my Instagram, I didn't invite anyone, go check it out. The very first picture you're going to see on my page is my before and after between age 49 and age 50. Mm -hmm. You're not even going to believe the transformation I went through. So I don't care how old you are, what kind of health issues you have in your life, we can get you turned around to doing the right things and getting great results. So yeah. believe it, all right? I believe you, man. I'm, I'm going to go check it out myself because I'm dealing yeah. with a little injury myself as far as with my back. And uh, it's creating a, a problem with my nerves, man. And, you know, it, it, mm. it's more so in the at nighttime where I feel it the most and uh, in the mornings, you know. And medicine is really oh, not, sorry to hear that. not helping. You know, you know, I know, you know, going through a back injury or back pain on how, you know, that, that can be very, very uncomfortable at times. But we ain't doing that, so I'm going to oh, check it out when, when we get off today. But uh, so on that note, you say to work for uh, success. So where should mm -hmm. someone start on their personal growth journey? Yeah, I like this question a lot because now this is something that's also not going to be popular, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm warning everybody it's not going to be popular. <laughs> but... This is my advice, okay? Whatever time you're waking up now, I want you to wake up a little bit earlier. Mm. And so here's the thing, okay? By waking up earlier, what I want you to do is prioritize some time for yourself. Mm -hmm. And ideally, you can wake up a nice hour earlier than you're waking up now, but I know that might be difficult for some people. Start with just 30 minutes. And this is what I recommend that you do with this extra time in the morning, okay? Wake up. I want you to read something positive. So buy a quote book, like a stoic quote book, or something with positive sayings in it. And I just want you to spend three to five minutes reading something positive to get your mind into a good place first thing in the morning. Mm. Then I want you to think about, ask yourself, or if, you're, if, you, you, know, if you believe in God, I want you to ask God after that. What do I regret from yesterday? And then let the answers come. They mm -hmm. will just come to you because your regret is not a choice. It's just a feeling that you're going to have. And your conscience or God, they will tell you, you shouldn't have spoken to this person that way. Why would you treat your wife like that? Why would you eat those extra cookies after lunch? <laughs> like, you know, it's going to come. It's right there. Yeah. And then all you have to do is say, okay, I got it. I'm going to try and do better today. Yeah. And... So if people can start doing that in the morning, you're instead of reaching for your phone, instead of getting right into your work email or whatever you do, just carve out a little bit of time for yourself first thing in the morning. I promise you, you're going to start to value yourself more. You're going to see the benefits. And I'll tell you what happened to me, CJ. I started with 30 minutes earlier, then I moved it to an hour earlier, then two hours earlier. And now I get a workout in. My workout's over before 7 a.m. 
and it really, really changed my life. So that's my number one tip. Wake up a little bit earlier and do those two steps first thing in the morning. You know, uh, Josh, I, like I say, man, you, I guess because we're in that same age bracket and we're on the same path in, in certain areas, man, do you know that I get to work, I get to work at least about an hour, sometimes about an hour, hour and a half early. So, you know, just to, like you say, sometimes you just have to have time to just focus on yourself. Uh, some of the things that you're trying to do, I can ride, I can ride in the car for weeks at a time without listening to the radio because you just have to have that, that me time, that time where you can reflect. Like some people say, you know, meditation and things like that, because sometimes you have to sit in silence so that you can hear the answers that you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I, I completely relate to you, <laughs> because I was the same as you. I used to always have the earphones in. I was always listening to a podcast or a book or music or something. And the older I get, the more I just sit with myself, just reflect on my life. It's so healthy. And, and that's the thing I want everybody to know um, is that, you have to prioritize you. Nobody else is going to do that. And so, you know, build that relationship with yourself. Give yourself some time. And it's the easiest first thing in the day. Once life gets going, you know, we got other people that we're all, you know, our people that we've got to, got to serve. Um, that's going to get in the way. So just make that time first thing in the morning. So precious. Mm, yeah, I, I, I like that. Spend some time with you. So that you can get a reflection on yourself. So, uh, Josh, on that note, man. So the next question is, I only have two more for you. How does someone find their life's purpose? Yeah, uh, what a question. Okay, so we've already hinted at this. And I'm, so I'm going to make it easy on everybody, okay? I'm going to tell you what your life's purpose is. Mm. Your life purpose is to build the best version of you, mm. the version of you that you can be proud of. So I want everybody to get out a piece of paper and just spend 10 minutes and write down what is the version of you that you know deep down in your heart and your soul is the best version of you. What kind of body do you have? What kind of energy do you have? What do you do? How much money do you have? I want you to write that down and know that that's your responsibility in this world. You don't need to fix all the world's problems. You've been given your life, and so you fix your life, and then I promise you, once you've done that, the whole world will open up to you. But that's the first step. you got to get you right. So mm. fix your problems first. That's your purpose. Mm. So let me ask one quick question. You say, write okay. down how much money you have. So do that mean... Write down how much money you got in the bank account or how much money you make per year. No, so I want people to write down how much they want to have. So okay. is that a million dollars? Is it five million dollars? Is it a hundred million dollars? Like whatever that amount is. And it's you know, and it's just because we want you to have an idea of what the best version of you is. For some people, they don't care as much about money, right? Yeah. They may want to just be healthy. They just may want to be a great member of their family or their community, and maybe money's less important. So that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you're the kind of person that always wanted a fancy sports car, or you always wanted to have a nice house or something, then you know, be honest about that. That's the best version of you. You get to choose. Mm -hmm. You know, so write that, write that down, and then that's your goal every single day is to um, is to work towards that. And, um, you know, it's the most beautiful thing that you can do with your life. And I'll tell you, there's actually a secondary purpose um, as well that we could talk a little bit about, um, uh, if you like, DJ. Go ahead. I'm all, all right. ears, bro. So, so here's the thing. Once you're focused on your primary purpose and you're doing that every day, and what's going to happen is you're gradually going to begin keeping the promises you make to yourself, right? Mm. So I wake up at this time and I do my morning process and I work out four days per week. And I, you know, once you can consistently be following through with that and you're sort of out of your own way, you are going to become 
that best version of yourself, then when you're really on that path, your secondary purpose will reveal itself. Mm. And so that may be helping others. Maybe it's you know helping with the environment or animals or some other cause, or maybe it's starting a business of some sort. It will become obvious to you. And I think for a lot of people, we stress about what am I meant to do on this earth and what's my purpose? If you just focus on building the best you first, I promise you, the next thing is going to appear. Mm. Uh, and that's what happened to me. You know, I, I made a lot of money in my sales career, but I wasn't happy. So I focused on getting my life straightened out. Within about six months, I realized I need to teach other people what I've learned. And now that's my life's purpose. I, you know, my first purpose was getting myself right. Now I know it's to help other people do the same for them. And it's a beautiful thing, my friend. Yeah, I, I, I know the feeling, man. I know the feeling. And out of everything that you said today, the most important thing and one thing that keeps coming over uh, time and time again is get yourself right, people. Work on yourself. Yeah. And once you work on yourself, things will be revealed to you on what your next step is and who knows where it would take you. It can put, put you in service, like you said, or, you know, uh, helping family members, whatever it is, it can be revealed to you. And, and on that note, one thing you said, too, when you talk about write it down, uh, I know that's scriptorial for, like you say, people that who believe in God that want to read uh, worship or, you know, some type of inspirational uh, piece. That's one thing that's in the Bible, too. It talks about write the vision down plain. And when you write it down plain, those who see, you know, they'll flee from it. And so you have to write your vision down. Uh, sometimes we call it a vision board to write down the things that you're looking that you're looking to accomplish. As you know, like on uh, New Year's Eve, people write down their New Year's res resolutions for the year. And then as as things start happening, you start checking it off. You're like, OK, oh, I accomplished that this year. I accomplished this this year. And so write the vision down, as Josh said of the things that you're looking for to happen in your life and start checking them off. And then once you start checking them off, you'll start believing more in yourself and more in the things that you're doing. Yes, sir. And I'll tell you, it's so great that you said that, TJ, because I have a document in my Google Drive called Josh. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, a, it, it's about two pages long, and it just has all my character traits, my values, you know, what I want for my body, what I want for my career, what I want for my relationship. And so I read that regularly just so that I know what it is that I'm building towards. And it's, it, you know, it, it's really helpful. And you said it so well, you know, build yourself. But here's what I really want people to do. Really what you're doing is loving yourself. Mm -hmm. I want people to love themselves because we are going to have a better world when there's more love in it. And you got to start by loving you. And once you're good at that, you're going to be able to love others and love the world in such a beautiful way. But it starts with you. You're worth it. And if you want to know how to do this, come follow me on Instagram and see how I'm doing it every day. And I'll, uh, you know, um, people can learn what my version of love is, which is healthy habits and getting rid of those negative habits, you know? Mm, yeah, that's... That's a good plan, man. I'm going to start following you on Instagram today. So, Josh, my final Amazing. question, man, and I really appreciate you coming on, man, giving us this wisdom, this insight, man. It's very, very valuable. So my final question for you, man, is tell us about understanding the secrets to help a person find their purpose. Yeah, yeah. So the, the secret is that in this world, you know, when we're young, when we're born, we're babies, we're reliant on our mother, right? And we're reliant on our parents. Yep. And then we're reliant on our families and our communities and our schools. And I think this sets us all up to think that we need to find our, um, you know, we need to find our strength outside of ourselves. Mm. But really, what the maturation process is, is realizing that you're responsible for you and the secrets are within you and what you've got to do is take good care of you mm -hmm. now nobody else can make the decision in your life to do the healthy thing stop the negative 
only you can decide those, those things. And here's the thing, the healthier you become, the more you show yourself this love, you are going to influence the people around you. At first, you're going to make them uncomfortable because you're saying no to the drink and no to the bad food and no to the bad habits. But over time, they're going to say, wow, you know, you're looking great. You're feeling great. I'm inspired. You know, I, I want to learn something from you. And that's how you change the world. So that's, that's the secret. Look mm. within yourself. Start loving you today. And uh, I promise your whole life's going to turn around if you do that really well. Man, you heard it from my man, Josh Flowers. Start loving you. That's the secret to finding your purpose. Hey, Josh, is there anything else you would like to share with us? Any upcoming uh, endeavors that you got going on that we can look forward to before we get out of here? Well, I'm appearing on a lot of podcasts, DJ, to spread uh, this message and to uh, you know try and get in front of all these great audiences that are out there. So I just want to thank anybody that's listened to this show today and encourage you again. You know, I'd love to help you with coaching, but I say as a first step for everybody, go to my Instagram, which is instagram.com forward slash Josh Flower One, and just check out what I'm doing. See if you like me. See if you, you resonate with, with how I'm living. And if so, you drop me a message anytime. I'm always the one responding to it. I will be right there to, to respond and, and help you out. And if you'd like to get on one of my coaching programs, it would be my honor. Mm, you heard it here on the CJ Money Way Show. Follow my man Josh Flowers on Instagram. He said he don't have no auto bots that's responding from him. You're going to get the word <laughs> from him <laughs> fresh off out of his mouth. The man hey. himself. <laughs> <laughs> the man himself. Hey, I thank you for listening to the CJ Money Way Show, the podcast that brings you stories behind the success. Thank you for tuning in today. This has been your boy CJ Money Way and my new friend Josh Flowers. We out of here. Peace. Thank you for listening to the CJ Moneyway Show. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends. Leave a comment and drop a review. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday and Friday for more inspiring journeys. Who knows? Your story might be next. Is it time to reimagine your future? The right business skills may make a difference in your career. At Capella University, we offer a relevant education that's designed to focus on what you need to know in the business world. We'll teach professional skills to help you pursue your goals, like business management, strategic planning, and effective communication. And you can apply these skills right away. A different future is closer than you think with Capella University. Learn more at capella.edu.